What do you hear at your church on Sunday? When the pastor stands up to give the message, what do you hear? Because illustrations are great and stories are, are fun to listen to and are, are memorable, but the content of the message needs to include law and gospel because we need both of those. We need both the law and the gospel. We need the law to convict our hearts and we need the gospel to comfort our hearts. And we see this when Peter was talking to a group of people at the, the temple. Peter had just healed a man who was a beggar and he couldn't walk. He had healed him in the name of Jesus. And this man could walk and, and he was clinging to Peter and, and this drew a crowd to him. It gave Peter the ears to, to listen to the message because word spread quickly after this man was healed. And it gave him the authority. Just like Jesus did miracles to solidify his message throughout his ministry, he gave Peter the ability to do this miracle, to give authority to his message so that people would know that this message came from God, for it was the power of God that healed this man. And it was the power of God that allowed Peter to speak these words. What Peter says when he has the ears of the crowd is instructive to us. He says this, The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has given this complete healing to him, as you can all see. Now, brothers, I know that you, are, you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders. But this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, saying that his Christ would suffer. Repent, then, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord, and that he may send the Christ who has been appointed for you, even Jesus. Peter confronts the crowd. You did this. You killed the author of life. And then he comforts them by saying that he has been raised from the dead. And then he urges them to repent and says their sins will be wiped out. Yes, you killed the author of life. But if you repent and believe in Jesus as your Savior, your sins will be completely wiped out. He confronted them in their sin, and he comforted them with the gospel. We need to hear both on a Sunday morning. If you are only comforted on Sunday mornings and you are not confronted, this message is not worthwhile for you. You need to be confronted in your sin. We all need to be confronted in our sin so that we see our need for a savior and we see the sins that we need forgiveness for. And so we are led to repent, to repent and, and turn to Jesus for that forgiveness so that our sins can be wiped out, so that we can be comforted again with the gospel. Without being confronted in our sins, we don't know what we need healing for that the gospel becomes less for us. We don't need the gospel anymore because we don't see the sins that we have. But when we are confronted in our sin, then we see the incredible need for the gospel that we have. And the gospel, it rings even sweeter in our ears as we hear that our sins have been forgiven. Demand this. Demand this in a message that you hear on, on Sunday morning. If you aren't hearing this regularly from your pastor on a Sunday morning, take that opportunity to sit down with your pastor and talk about it. Ask them about law and gospel and ask them about the law and gospel that is being preached or not preached in the sermon. Or 
If you've exhausted that option, find a church where, where you are hearing that message of law and gospel because you know that you need that so deeply. This word is what, what God uses to grow our faith and how he sends his Holy Spirit to work in our hearts. This is important stuff to be confronted and comforted. And if you are hearing the gospel message, if you are hearing a message of the law that, that prepares your heart to hear the gospel, give thanks. Give thanks anytime that you hear law and gospel preached from a pulpit. Yeah, illustrations are great. Stories are memorable. But law and gospel is what we really give thanks 